Okay, I'm going to try to do this while the other one's uh, still processing. Hopefully it'll work. Um, I've got the truck selected right now. Here's my motion panel. And what I want to do is take this thing off the path and show you a little bit about how I made the tailgate that moves and yet is still connected to the truck. And um, how you can get the pivot point on different objects set correctly because that came up when we, in the second truck tutorial, where we rotated the box, you could see that the pivot point was a little bit off because we went into the truck body a little bit. So anyway, let's do this. Go to position X, Y, Z under our position list, and I'll just say delete that. We'll go to path constraint and delete that. And you'll see that the truck goes back to its original orientation and position before we put it, uh, gave it a path constraint. So what I want to do is uh, just select it and the tailgate of the truck. In fact, let's just take everything in this little area and right click and say hide unselected. In fact, this thing should be hidden. And go to a front view. And let's get rid of the uh, ground. Don't need that right now. Don't need the camera. Don't need this path. Don't need this path. Don't need the new box. So we can just focus on what we need to focus on. Um, if I spin this around, you can see there's the tailgate. And the tailgate's just opening a little bit, and then the box can slide out. And we've got the box sliding out. It's, all, it's still keyframe, so just ignore it. In fact, we can just take the box and delete it for now. So, uh, how do we build this tailgate, and how do we set the pivot point on it? Um, well, the tailgate is just a box. It can be any object you want. In this case, it was simple enough to just make a box. And let's go again to frame one before we did any body work on this truck also. And let's just make a little box. Okay, and with a simple thing like this, you probably just want one segment in each direction. And then you've got to adjust your width so that it's as wide as the place you want to fill. And it may take a little while to get the size right. And let's see, I can go to a front, to a right side view, get this done a little faster. And sometimes it helps to just take the object, right click, go to properties, and say I want this to be see through. And sometimes that's actually a hindrance. I'll pull it a little bit closer to us so I can see it better. Definitely a little bit too big. Okay. I'm not going to fine tune it too much right now. Uh, maybe I'm going to make it a little bit too small so you can see real clearly when we do the pivot point work on it. Okay, so let me uh, get out of this object, and there's the old tailgate. Let's just hide that for a second. So now we've got a new tailgate. It's a little too tall. We can see that now. And move that up. And you can tell where the pivot point is on this just from where your uh, move gizmo is sitting. Make sure it looks pretty good. Pretty fairly centered, close enough for what we're doing. So what I'll do is go to my hierarchy panel, and uh, I'm going to say I want to affect pivot only. So you can see where the pivot is. So what I want to do, usually a, a pivot on an object like this is at the center, or sometimes it's at an edge. So what I'm going to do is take this pivot. Notice it says affect pivot only. And I'm going to drag this pivot down, and I'm better look in this other viewport, in the right viewport. Okay, so zoom in a little bit. You can see the pivot's down, but is it at the very edge of the box? Now it's pretty close, and I can continue to zoom in and fine-tune that. Effect pivot only. Got to make sure you still have the tailgate selected. If you select something else, it's going to change everything. And I want to look from the top view also. Because if this thing's going to spin on its edge, you want either the center or 
And see, so if this thing was on hinges, you probably want it on the right side of the box so that as it flips open, yeah, that's a tough call, isn't it? Depends on how thick it is, and it's actually a little bit too too thick right now. So what I'll do is go to hierarchy. Effectivity is only is turned off. Go to modify, and every bit thinner I make this, the less problem I'm going to have with having a little ridge that the box has to climb over. And sometimes the tailgate could be out here, and the hinge could be on the inside. So I'll leave that up to you. In this case, I'll go ahead and put it on the inside so that when it flips down, it's flush with the uh, bed of the truck. And the other thing I want to show on this tutorial is that we can make this tailgate a child of the truck. So to do that, the tailgate is selected. We'll go to animation, constraints, link constraint, and pick the truck body. So now when the truck body moves around, the tailgate moves around. Now that that's done, I can right click, go to properties, and say it's no longer see-through. And of course, you may have a texture or something on here that makes it even more uh, believable. Now when I move the truck body or animate it in any way, you can see the tailgate moves with it. right? And if you want that thing to flip open, like right here, just go to the tailgate, turn on auto key, go to rotate, and let's just nudge it, nudge it back so that it starts its rotation on frame 50 and rotates at frame 55. And let's say that it hits another bump and it starts to slam shut again. And then again, it comes back at uh, 66 and opens up, goes a little bit too far. And you can kind of see that happening now. And then, of course, you got to play it at full speed and think, is that believable? It needs a little more speed, I would say. So, just a quick look at how to do the tailgate and how to uh, set your hierarchy pivot points.